first let's define what is national security and understand its elements so this is the framework basic framework regarding the introduction we need to understand the elements of national security and what are the types of national security i just explained you a national security covers two types one is internal security the other one is external security as simple as that let's see what are the elements of national security and before that just see the definition first what is the definition of national security holistic term that includes protection of territory resources assets interests ideologies and institutions suppose if you look at the preamble or fr or dpsp there is one specific importance to one of the element that is there in this definition what is that what is that element that is directly worded in the preamble itself protecting the interests of integrity and also territory so first point we need to understand national security doesn't mean only the protection of territory that is the general understanding that we always have security means protecting the territory no that is not in 19th century in 18th century security refers to only territory but in the 21st century in the most globalized society security involves not just the protection of territory but also includes protection of resources ideologies interests for example what is the economic interest of india what is the economic interest of india just just define what is economic interest to ensure employment provide inclusive growth provide more as much possible as uh, in terms of logistics have more exports for example india is having uh, fta with southeast asian nations there is a concern that the plantation labor in the kerala and tamil nadu especially will be impacted by the fta with the asian nations because asian countries like indonesia malaria, malaria uh, uh, sorry myanmar and uh, malaysia all these countries are having especially very good at plantation so having fta with asian countries also impact your economic interests right or wrong so that is also an dimension which we need to appreciate from the angle of from the perspective of national security understanding somebody suppose ask you can you please please put the very ideology of india in terms of international forum on the stage of international forum what sort of ideology being represented by india india subscribes to which philosophy post world war 2 hmm very good non aligned movement e maintaining equidistance from both the poles of capitalism as well as from the communism so are we protecting our Na nam objectives are we ensuring furthering sustaining the nam objectives so that is also an important dimension which we need to appreciate from the see internal security is not just about national security is not just about maintaining or securing or protecting the interests of your territory it is also about all sort of interests all sort of dimensions that are being the part of security be it economic social political right environmental so that is that is the idea which we need to understand so what is the importance of article 355 discuss the importance of article 355 what is 355 article says what is 356 precedence rules what is it the word that is there in article 356 356 what is the exact word ensuring the ensuring that states maintain the constitutional obligation if state governments fail to protect the constitutional obligation if there is a breakdown of constitutional machinery central government has power to power to remove the state governments right or wrong that is the article 356 Article 356 gives the enormous power to the central government. Keep it in mind. Be, before Article 356, constitutional makers has provided an important responsibility to the central government in terms of Article 355. Before Article 356, there is already responsibility. The responsibility comes along with the power. The responsibility is in terms of ensuring the state's interest, protecting them from the 
external invasions and maintaining the internal security what is who, whose primary objective it is to maintain law and order in the state law and order comes under the responsibility of whom state. jurisdiction of whom state. state but central is also having constitutional responsibility to support to secure the interests of state governments in protecting the law and order not just from the elements of internal security but also from the external elements which also causes problems to the internal security so article 356 5 provides the constitutional obligation on the part of central government in providing and maintaining and securing the securing the security interests of the state governments so article 355 is important from the point of security dimension clear can somebody tell me what is the highest body that is responsible uh, for ensuring or deciding the matters related to the security home affairs is the ministry there is a specific executive body which deals with matters related to the security NIA. pardon nia nia is an investigation mechanism investigative institution hmm css cabinet committee of security ccs which is the apex body which deals with the matters related to the security consists of whom not everything will be in these slides pm external affairs ministry or top portfolios defense home finance obviously the top 5 will be the part of ccs cabinet committee of security apart from cabinet committee of security there is another important body that is also deals with the matters related to the security which is also an executive body the name of the body is the name of the body is spg special protection group spg is a core of that institution which will be supported by national security advisory council ncac national security advisory council spg national security advisory council or national security advisory secretariat which will be headed by national security advisor anyway let's understand further there are two broad elements one is called military element when it comes to security the second one is called non military elements what is military element what is military element indicates force quotient indicates hard power capabilities indicates your security approach towards the development as we just we said the trilateral security forces the police forces and also the police forces being assisted by whom for maintaining security capf central armed police forces see internal security will be governed by two important forces one is state police forces which will be further supported by central armed police forces any any, any idea about list of central armed police forces central reserve police force anyway this we will be dealing but i am giving the overall introduction today csf pardon bsf bsf okay itbp itbp assam rifles is not capf assam rifles doesn't come under capf anything missing itbp ssb csf crpf bsf out of which bsf itbp and sastra seema bal maintains what border security well csf maintains the interests of sensitive establishments crpf will assist directly the state police in maintaining the law and order so the military elements include the force quotient availability of different forces and also the interest with respect to 
preventing the military aggression and also defending the territory. This is the military element, this traditional conventional way of approaching the national security or internal security or external security. But there are other elements which are non-military elements important from the contemporary view of viewpoint regard for, private, for protecting the security interest. So first one is economic security. Economic security is important for national security because can you give me any link case how economic security is important for national security? Right. Unless there is an economic support, there is no question of maintaining your hard power also. Right or wrong? It is as simple as that. Unless there is economic power, there is no point of maintaining the power. Your hard power should be substantiated by the, your economic power. Right or wrong? For example, what is sovereignty? The object of internal security or external security is to maintain sovereignty of a nation, right? So, what is sovereignty? No external forces influencing your decision making capability, right? So, in a 21st century, can we really say that we are sovereign purely in terms of our ability to exercise our own interest? Right or wrong? Something happening at Russia Ukraine border is impacting us. Our stock markets are impacted, right or wrong? So, we are not completely sovereign in the globalized societies, right or wrong? If you want to maintain your sovereignty to a certain extent, you definitely require stronger economic support. Not just economic support, there are other elements as well, but the first importance lies to, the central importance lies to in terms of non-military aspects will be economic dimension. Clear? either to maintain your inclusive growth, to provide due employment, to ensure being uh, eradicating social objectives like poverty. Obviously, you need more and more economic growth, which is one pillar which supports your national security interests. Clear? Second one, energy security. How energy security is important for ensuring national security? How energy security is important for ensuring Ensuring national security, how it is connected, how it is linked, just give me the linkage. India is a country which is energy hungry nation. Three fourth of our energy requirements are being basically met by only through imports, not exports. And what sort of imports? Basically, it is petroleum goods and obviously coal. Right or wrong? Suppose a country is targeting your imports especially energy imports, oil pipelines, natural gases supply, or coal. In what way you can say that your country is secure, basically? A country which cannot produce two things, two fundamental things. One is food production, second one is sufficient energy production. Cannot claim itself as a, cannot claim itself as a power at all, in the modern sense. Right or wrong? You are, you are, you are protecting your territory, but you are, your people are, facing hungry deaths and your country is having energy shortage, in what way that you are truly powerful? Absolutely no meaning, right? So energy security is another prime importance in maintaining your national security. Environmental security, environmental security examples? Environmental security, is there anything which is happening outside of this territory of India Impacting the environmental resources of India or Indian Ocean? Hmm? Climate change. Yeah. Plus, any more? How climate change is impacting environmental security? I, the, no, I, the, that is not what I am asking. I am asking how environmental security is impacting Indian resources, thereby impacting the security of the nation. Pardon? Agriculture, okay. In more direct sense, what you said is true. Any, any anything directly in the our very vicinity of Indian Ocean, exclusive economics that geography may study. No, so monazite deposits within the vicinity of Kerala. 
why monazite deposits are important for india uh, what nuclear power what what what, what uranium is you what is what we are using majorly right but if india wants to enter into the third stage of nuclear cycle you should depend on the ability to cultivate the resources of thorium as well right or wrong those thorium depo deposits are there in the exclusive economic zone which is part of your indian ocean so something which is happening from the environmental dimension if it curtails your ability to harness the thorium deposits so then in that in a way directly impacts your national security try to understand this particular diagram is only an illustrative in nature but you can give as many examples as possible disaster security what we are having you know since last two years is nothing but in the midst of a kind of biological disaster that is in the form of covid Did covid impact the national security or not in what way how covid impact the national security suppose if the entire battalion suddenly exposed to covid what will happen you need to replace that entire battalion with another battalion in terms of time in terms of resources there will be definitely certain challenges especially in the illy inaccessible unconnected areas right or wrong that will be the right time for the rivalries to take the advantage right or wrong how many commands are there in india security approach how many different commands 17 commands southwest command southeast command north command northwest central central east east likewise the entire india's security is maintained by in the say in terms of 17 different commands suppose assume that a place called andaman which requires the presence of all the three forces that is why it is called trilateral command suppose if the force or the strength or there is suddenly impacted by some sort of biological security biological threat being exposed to a novel variants of corona or maybe some other virus or bacteria then obviously it will have leads to what difficulty in managing the specific areas which are strategically more important for india right or wrong so the whole idea is to understand that there are certain elements within the national security that definitely will have greater priority not just in terms of protecting your resources not just in terms of maintaining the edge over the territory but also important in terms of maintaining suitable policies effective implementation preparation organization right or wrong so the conventional approach of dealing national security only in terms of hard power is not at all advisable or acceptable anymore you need to deal with the elements of national security from all the dimensions that are there in that that are there in terms of governance right or wrong if there is a question on governance whatever you write for making the answer all those elements are also important for addressing the issues of national security clear cyber security for example cyber security you know earlier we used the word battlefield now we are using the word battle space why because the fourth dimension is space earlier the battle was in the realm of land or ocean or air space but now the outer space is also a space where there will be tug of war or tussle between the nations india recently launched shakti weapon shakti which is an one of the counter satellite missile which placed india in, into the elite club of nations which are having the capability of launching offenses against the offenses against the satellites in the lower earth orbits right or wrong what are the other three countries usa you need not to doubt usa russia these two 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 names are pretty common third one is china so apart from usa russia china now we are having the india is having the india is the fourth country which is having anti satellite capabilities understand the term understand the importance of space as an important 
बैटिल एरेना दैट इज वे नाउ वी आर यूजिंग द वर्ड बैटिल स्पेस अलियर द स्पेस इज बींग मिलिटराइज दैट इज नॉट ए प्रॉब्लम दैट इज नॉट ए बिगर कंसर्न बट द प्रॉब्लम इज नाउ स्पेस इज गेटिंग वेपनइज दैट इज द ग्रेटर कंसर्न अंडरस्टैंडिंग मिलिटराइजेशन ऑफ स्पेस इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वेपनइजेशन ऑफ स्पेस नाउ वॉट वी आर विटनेसिंग इज नाउ वॉट वी आर विटनेसिंग इज वेपनइजेशन ऑफ स्पेस इफ देर इज मोर अमाउंट ऑफ वेपनइजेशन ऑफ स्पेस इमीडिएटली देर विल बी मोर कंसर्स बिकॉज यू सपोज इफ युअर सैटलैट्स आर बींग अटैक्ड बै द एडवर्सरी इन ड्यूरिंग द एग्जाक्ट पीरियड ऑफ वारफेर वाट विल हैपन हाउ सैटलैट्स आर यूजफुल कम्युनिकेशन कैपबिलिटी नाविगेशन कैपबिलिटी राइट और रॉंग ऑल युवर क्रूज मिजल्स बैलिस्टिक मिजल्स दे ट्रावल ट्राजेक्टरीज ऑल दीज आर डिपेंडिंग ऑन दी द एग्जाक्ट प्रिसीशन दैट विल बी शोन बै दि सैटलैट्स राइट और रॉंग सपोज इफ युअर सैटलैट्स आर अटैक्ड वाट विल हैपन what will happen you want to launch against uh, lahore but that missile will can be play can attack maybe egypt or maybe turkey possible or not satellites are the in, in, you, instruments which provides you the navigation and unless you are having that navigational support you cannot win the warfare see the modern warfare is no more conventional it is highly unconventional that is why it is also called as hybrid warfare or mosaic warfare or technological warfare see these are the terms which you need to write while answering your questions in the introduction or conclusion technological warfare because now there is a onslaught of so many different technologies with respect to the battle space for example automatic robots self defense robots robots which can also Uh, deals with the natural language processing capabilities stealth configuration stealth means invisible invisibility the stealth capabilities of nations are getting increased high energy lasers under sea radars long range uh, uh, sensors these are all the different elements different portions that are there in the technological field which increasing the complexity of ba battlefield the warfare remains constant but the nature of warfare is continuously evolving the warfare remains constant but the nature of warfare remains constantly evolving that is the characteristics of the new age warfare understanding suppose your cyber equipment means all those equipment that has connected with ict technologies information and communication technologies are being targeted then what will happen have you heard about word cia critical information infrastructure what is cia critical information infrastructure the modern high speed trains are being operated by what the modern high speed trains are being operated by super computers the power grids what is power grid unification of all uh, power lines the loading shedding of the power from one zone to another zone from uh, excess region to a grid which is running at a deficit region that is called power grid power grid is a company power grid corporation of india is another company so which operates the grids balances the grids suppose this power grids balance is also being done by the computers right or wrong submarines metro trains rba servers data storage all these are part of your critical information infrastructure or critical infrastructure information cia so in case of cyber warfare what will happen adversaries or rival risks can simply target your cyber systems will cripple you without dropping a single blood with it dropping without even causing the drop of single blood they can completely cripple the entire security of the nation right or wrong see you need not to invade you need not to use the hard force you can also use cyber capabilities so that you can also cause the impediments to the security of the entire nation so cyber 
security is one of the important quintessential element of the national security in the modern times understanding we will discuss all these things don't worry things may be new things may be very few very very new to some of you who are preparing for the first time but you can understand all these things but try to take the broader idea what are all the elements important characteristics of national security any more items which are which requires explanation for you or this explanation of this slide itself will take 3 hours if we are having you know enough amount of time we can discuss everything in very detailed sense but try to understand i will be giving you some notes and we'll be sharing this ppt but please tell me any specific slide which needs explanation for you pardon ethnic security ethnic security means see there is something called proxy war proxy war means you need not to invade the other nation what is better compared to the actual invasion you provoke the fault lines sectarian fault lines that are there in your nation so that your own people will be fighting against the your nation pakistan knows very well that it cannot exactly counter the india in a direct warfare that is why it is providing it is providing arms equipment training assistance to the elements that are there in the kashmir so far so that kashmiri citizens will be directly fighting against the indian government suppose on the global front if something happens something happens then pakistan can simply say see the kind of human rights violations that is happening in kashmir that is the reason why kashmir is boiling down and indian government is suppressing and exploiting the its own people so that it can malign the image of india right or wrong or suppose if those elements are successfully targeted certain military bases or police establishments then also it will be a definitely a cost advantage factor for pakistan right or wrong it is not directly involved it is only indirectly involved so that we cannot prove that indirect involvement of pakistan in the every major security operation that is happened in india thereby it can it is a very cost beneficial ratio for pakistan to have a proxy war rather than involving itself directly in the conventional warfare understanding it is more economical it is easy it you cannot trace the involvement because it involves so many different networks or different intermediaries in between you cannot uh, identify and trace the exact linkages all the time right or wrong so those rivalries those adversaries who are interested in exposing the existing deep divisions which are already there in the society are interested in only what inciting inciting means provoking the ethnic security for example 1954 as a aj mizo is the first one who started the independence movement for mizo started independence movement for nagaland the situation is still boiling down see even after 60 years not just nagaland but also parts of manipur parts of mizoram parts of assam parts of arunachal pradesh are witnessing such flames and fires right or wrong which is an exact classic example of ethnic securities naga wants complete nagaland wherever nagas present they want a, a place for themselves which is out of india's sovereignty but now that that place is also being claimed by mizoram in mizoram the place is also being claimed by assam is in assam understanding so that is ethnic security clear resource security means there is a famous statement if at all there is a world third world war the third world war will happens for the sake of water very good it is about water water is becoming increasingly deficit it are not just will be unleashing the the tussles or tug of wars between the states but also between the countries examples examples 
for transnational rivers in which india is a part and being criticized and also criticizing yes. brahmaputra who is criticizing india bangladesh, bangladesh. whom india is criticizing china because china is developing large scale hydro power projects which is causing the diversion of the river waters and china is having very shortage of water in the, its northern region so that it is diverting waters from the southern china to northern china which is causing environmental security ecological disturbances in the indian region and thereby india also sharing very limited amount of brahmaputra water so that it is also being criticized by the bangladesh within india kaveri krishna what not everything right or wrong so ensuring resource security is also important to prevent problems of internal securities any other explanation why political security is important unless there is a political stability there will not be any development right or wrong unless there is a political stability there will not be investment climate unless there is a conducive investment climate there will not be invest from from the other regions without investment there will not be social sector development as well as simple as that food security three s availability accessibility affordability the fourth a is added in the recent times that is absorbability absorbability talks about not just the sufficient production of the food grains not just the availability and accessibility of food grains but also the food grains should constitute should be constituted production of food grains should be constituted in terms of the enough amount of nutrient supply we are focusing more on the cereal dimension less on the millets and other important micronutrients so that is absorbability that is about food security so the point is overall summarize the point is security is not just about maintaining the territorial protection not just about maintaining your resource base but also about protecting all other non military dimensions especially energy security cyber security environmental security food security resource security okay so whenever you are going through newspapers current affairs try to understand how this particular issue is can be linked to security be it environmental security be it internal security or external security